Okay, and this is the third video, and what we're going to be talking about is the bulk of the work that's done, and that is right here. So as you can see, what we do is we, the logic behind this is if you, for every primitive, you march around at the points, and you march around and you make a segment, you go all the way around, and you build the inside polys. And while you're doing that, you build the top one, and you build the back one. And so you construct your geometry by basically tracing this primitive. Now, uh, a couple things, you know, I'm just going to add some parameters here like you saw me do in the first one. And so I'm going to go segment length and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this on manual because zero um, I'm going to actually go we're going to put a clamp value in here Yeah, good thing I did because you can see how how high that uh, divided when it hit zero. So uh, let's hit this again. Oh, that probably is not evaluating correctly. All right, there we go. And so we can go to 0 0.05. And all right, so there you go. So as you can see, and another uh, thing on the side here. You, you don't see it divide on the side because we really don't need that so we can just cut it out and save ourselves some polygons. Now the reason I'm doing this is like I explained if you're ever in a situation where you have to export to another package you're gonna wanna do this and uh, because you know or you can write a shader in the other package but you might not have that other option so this is this is the way it's done and so a couple things uh, to note is the sides have to share a uh, connection attribute so through a constraint network you can basically break them and and so you can you can control the insides now I'm probably gonna get to that later but it was pretty essential into setting that up now well, let's take a look at the the code so for every for every primitive, that's what we're operating on. So we need these things to store variables in because uh, what this what this does is as as this guy here he marches along here. What happens is you create a point, the two points, but then you got to remember back and then you build your polygon. So you go the last first, the last second. Uh, the current second and then the current first and that's how you build the polygon and so here we grab um, uh, we're setting attributes here we don't need the top faces don't need a connection attribute so uh, oh and of course I start I create a polygon uh, that's a pretty major I shouldn't skip ahead here so for every primitive Basically, I recreate that polygon on the front, and then I recreate it on the back. And then so as I create March and create my points, I can add those points into this polygon. Then I can set it their prim group to front, and then I set them to back. They don't need a connection ID because they're not connected to anything. And like the connection ID, this has to be here because on your last primitive, you got to remember or your last or your last line right here I'm looking at the insides here you gotta remember what connection ID this whole segment needed because at the very end you close it with one last polygon and then you have to assign that connection attribute or you're gonna have some artifacting alright so here's here's the bulk of it so for every primitive on our input as you can see here we're gonna go through each vertice we're going to get that vert index.
from the primitive number, then we're going to get the next one. And you can see I'm doing the mod, so I'm, when I'm on the last one, I can march for it and I can get the first, the very first one. So if this is the last here, my next vertice is the first one. There's some functions like vertex next, vertex previous. I haven't gotten them to work. All right. So now that I have the ver uh, vertex index, which is a linear vertex, I can now access the point. So I get the point, and now I can get, pretty much right here, I can get a bunch of attributes here. Now, so I can get, uh, now that I have this vertice, I can get the point, I can get the position, I can get the normal, and then I can get it for the next segment. And so I'm gonna skip this uh, right here on the in point, or not that, on setting the connection ID right here. I'm going to skip that. Um, so what I'm going to do is right here I have new positions for, that's back here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the position, I'm adding the normal, and that, those are our new positions. So we have position zero, so if this is the first vertice, that's position zero, this is new position zero, this is position one, this is new position one right here. And then once we, so for every vertice, we create a point, so here and then here, so we create two points, and we can add those to the front and back faces. Now on the first one, uh, on the very first vertice, we don't have to go back and build a polygon. We don't have to reach back and make another one. That's not important. Um, but if it's not, what we got to do is we got to set the very first. So this is for close. So we can close our polygon. Um, sort of wish I could zoom in. Now let's search. Um, yeah, you can't zoom in. That would be really nice if I could zoom in here. So uh, what I can do now is I can begin the segmentation. Oh, and I'm setting the last first and the last second after they've been created. I can store these in the variable. That's a very, very important because we make a point, then we got to store it so we can build our polygon. Now what we can do is we can um, get we get the distance in between here, these two of every segment, and then we do the uh, segment length, and then uh, we set how many, you know, so we're just dividing, getting the closest uh, segment length here. And so that's that's the segment. Uh, one small segment is that is the distance divided by the max segment length. So what we can do is we can start marching through them. So if if it's too small, like if you have like right here and say that's too small, you're just going to skip this segmenting and then you're just going to close off the segment there. And also you're going to skip it if you're on a side here. So up here these these registers side and the way you do that is you get the point uh, values right here and you just check if they're in the point group side points which we set above so that's going to register as in point that's going to register as in side point and then so uh, but on this it won't because we have true and then we have false and then so if not side subdivide all right, so now what we want to do is we want to start at P1 because the first position's at zero and we don't want to double up. That's already been created up above uh, right here. So we start at one and then we march along the segment. And what's very important is this R int right there. If I take that R int off and apply that code, you see how they shifted a little bit? You want to round to the nearest integer to line, uh, to line them up that's very important and so what this is this is doing pretty much is it's giving us a 0 to 1 integer value or 0 to 1 blending values um, across the segment so it's like 0 to 1 and so that allows us to interpolate 
the position uh, the position zeros are at the top and the position ones the new pause one and new pause one new pause zero new pause one those interpolate along the bottom so once you have those positions and you interpolate you can add the point and then you can add a second point Alright, and then we can set the name attribute. That's absolutely critical because that's how these, you know, rigid body um, things communicate. Uh, rigid bodies communicate to each other is usually through the name attribute. And then we can add those. So as we march here, we, you know, we set the name on each point and then we add, if it's this first one created that's on the surface, we add it to the front. If it's on the back, we add it to the back. And then this is, of course, the new prim. And then, as you can see, we store the last second in the first. And so that builds that builds the edges. Um, that builds the polygons here. So can I jump ahead? I'll just skip the edge displacement. So right here, you can see all these are polygons here. And so we that's what's building is this block of code. So it creates a point and then it goes to the back uh what was created before and it creates the polygon around that. Then you set the attribute that you determine the connection ID uh that you go from here and we'll talk about that later but that as you can see these are colored by connection ID. So they all they're all going to be able to talk to the con constraint network. And then that's pretty much it. And then you close it off right here. And so that's just the last, um, if it started here and it went around. Uh, so let's let's see if we can find, we, we can, oh. Yeah, let's, uh, if zero, let's just uh, keep it open. I'll show you what happens here. So we have to have uh, this, and oh, we'll want to put that in that block. Uh, where did I mess up here? Oh, I think I just have to reevaluate. No, nope, it's totally messed. Oh, it must be up here. I deleted something. I'm going to pause. I accidentally hit something and I messed up that variable. Whoa. All right, so what I can do is if zero. Then we can go down to the transform. Then let's find some pieces. And as you can see, all right, so now we have a gaping hole in there. And oh, so there's there's a good example right there. So if you don't close it off because it started here and it marched around, you need to be able to close it off at the end. And so I'm just going to toggle that variable around or on and it closes it off. So that is the general uh, uh, subdivision setup, and as you can see, uh, the way we colored it is if we go here, you know, all those those con connection attributes, we build that we build we build that here, and uh, this is already pretty long, so I'll talk about the constraint network that drives this in the next video. Thanks for watching.